Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. I'm Major Garrett. Last week, the government shut down again. Didn't last long. And behind it was something of a breakthrough. Republicans and Democrats agreed on $500 billion in new spending. Now, Congress has six weeks to sort out the details, but one thing we know already. President Trump's Washington is adding $320 billion to the deficit. Fears of deficits and mounting debt contributed to volatility on Wall Street this week. And what about consumer financial protections? Are they being weakened? Joining us now is White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney. He was also the acting director of the Consumer Financial Protection Board. Mr. Director, those issues are important. But first, it's a bad week for the White House in terms of personnel. Why shouldn't women reasonably wonder if this White House doesn't have a lax attitude when it comes to the question of domestic abuse? Yeah, I don't think we have a lax attitude. I think what you saw happen this week, Major, was was completely reasonable and normal. The president had someone reasonable work, and normal. Let, let me explain that. The president had someone working for him who came to him and said, "Look, I've been accused of this. I've been falsely accused of this. Please don't believe it. It's not true." Um, if your cameraman came to you and said that to you, you probably would give that person the benefit of the doubt, or at least you'd want to do that because you know that person and you trust that person. And that's what the president did up until the time that it became obvious when the photographs came out that the person was not being honest with the president. And that person, after that happened, we dismissed that person immediately. So that, that's an ordinary and it's very human reaction to the, to the set of circumstances. You don't want to throw people out on the street based just upon the allegation. But as soon as it became apparent to us um, that the allegations were true, um, the, Rob Porter had to go. In other words, Rob Porter deceived the chief of staff of the president of the United States. Uh, I, I think that uh, under the circumstances, he wasn't entirely forthcoming with him. And I think the photographs took every Everybody by surprise. Was there a blind spot because of the reputation Rob Porter had in the White House? No, I think I think the president and the and the and the, the chief of staff, I am much more likely to believe people not based on their gender, but based on our relationship with them. If Kellyanne Conway had come to the president <laughs> and said something, we'd be more inclined to believe that person than the person that we don't know. Again, I think that's very natural human reaction to the circumstances. In this climate, do you think the president missed an opportunity and may have insulted people by not at least recognizing the victims in this situation? I, Rob I, Porter's ex-wives and though the wife of David Sorensen, who are victims. Yeah, I, I think what you saw uh, the president go through this week, and I don't know if you all played the video of the, the speech that he gave or the comment that he made, um, he was extraordinarily saddened by this. He's, he's been let On down. On behalf of Rob. By, he's been let down by somebody who he trusted, somebody who he put in a place of, of, of authority uh, and then wasn't told the truth. I think that, that saddened the president. I, I think you saw that this week. You've spoken very highly of Chief Kelly, the chief of staff, saying he's brought order and discipline. Was this week a week that is consistent with the order and discipline? Yeah, and again, I keep telling you, and we've had these conversations before, that to, to watch the media cover the West Wing and then go to work there is like night and day. Um, to believe the media that it's, there's complete disarray, there's a bunch of infighting, and it's simply not the case. The, the West Wing continues to function. It functions well. I hear that I'm being considered, in the media at least, for, for replacing the chief of staff. You think that maybe someone would have mentioned it to me. No one's talked to me at all, not a single time. How badly do you about want that, that job? I don't want that job. I love the job, jobs that I have now. And more importantly, I think the chief of staff is doing a really good job. And most importantly, I think the president thinks he's doing a great job as well. Last week, in the midst of all this, John Kelly served the president well. I believe so. Uh, under the circumstances of having someone who is close Even to you. with that statement that you, says he is a man of true integrity? You are going to want to believe and trust the people that are close to you and that you know. So, yeah, I think the, the problem here was with, was, was with Mr. Porter, not with the chief of staff. All right, let's go to the budget. Why is spending this money now and having deficits projected at more than a trillion dollars in a growing non-recessionary economy that has already jittered Wall Street for a full week a good idea? Um, it's a very dangerous idea, but it's the world we live in. Here's what happens. We want money to defend the nation. Uh, we believe, General Mattis has made a case, I think, to both Democrats and Republicans and to the public alike, that we need more money to defend the nation against things like the threats from the North Koreans. Um, we were hoping that we could sit down with the Democrats and figure out a way to get additional funds to the military to respond to these threats. Publicly, the Democrats said they wanted to help fund the, the, the Defense Department. Privately, though, what they said was they would not give us a single additional dollar for defense unless we gave them dollar for social programs. You knew they were going to say that. Well, but the, the, publicly, we, they were not saying that. Publicly, they're saying they wanted to defend the nation. They'll say that Democrats care as much about defense as Republicans uh, do, but when the, when the rubber meets the road, they don't. They held the Defense Department hostage, and we had to pay that ransom. Congressman Mick Mulvaney, 
Would he have voted for this? Oh, probably not. But keep in mind, I'm not Congressman Mick Mulvaney anymore. I'm much closer to, to Mr. Meadows, who you're going to have uh, on the show in a little bit, when I was in the, a member of Congress. My job as the director of the Office of Management and Budget is to try to get the president's agenda passed. And right now, the top priority for this president was getting the Defense Department the money necessary to defend the nation. Let me ask you about your other job, Acting Director of the Consumer Financial Protection Board. It has been alleged that you have stopped that agency's investigation to Equifax, have you? Um, let me, I, I had to give you a legal answer to that. Um, if you ask somebody at the FBI about an ongoing investigation, you'll hear the same thing you hear from me, which is that I cannot comment on whether or whether or not there's 30 an investigation. Thirty senators believe you have, um, and have written to you on, to that effect. I would encourage those senators to go look at the public 10Q filing that Equifax made last quarter, and then to look to the t public 10Q filing that they'll be making at the end of this quarter. That's all I can say about uh, about that matter. Where does Equifax and that data breach that affected 140 million Americans fall in your list of priorities for this agency you're now running? The, the, the agency's priorities remain the same. The Bureau's priorities remain the same. We will protect consumer. There is no question about that. The priorities have not changed since I took over. When you say protect consumers, can you define that? Because there are those who look at your attitude and what you've done there with payday lenders and possibly Equifax as taking a complete step back. What we've done over there, John, is... Major. We, major, I'm sorry, excuse me, goodness gracious. <laughs> he used to be um, here. He used to be here. Um, the, what we've done here is we've tried to figure out a way to manage this bureau. This bureau is unlike any other federal bureaucracy. It's run by one person, right now, me. It had almost unlimited access to funds. It has no accountability to Congress. It is perhaps the most unaccountable bureau or agency there is. We want to run that place with a good deal of humility and prudence. We're not being aggressive. We're not pushing the envelope. We're taking a different attitude towards the job, but the priorities have not changed. Again, how would you define consumer protection under your leadership? What does that mean? That what, we, will they, what will people be protected from that they should be uh, they will afraid of? They be protected from fraud, from un lenders, unfair and deceptive high trade practices, rates? things that are illegal. That's what we do. We enforce the law. We do not make the law. And I think that's an important distinction between my leadership and the previous leadership of the, of the Bureau. We will not be making law. We will not be making stuff up as we go. We will be enforcing the law on the books. By implication, are you saying that's what the previous director did? It's not implication. I'm saying it straight out. Mr. Director, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Face the Nation.